Hi everyone, Josie here, Life at 50 and Beyond. Thanks for joining me here in my channel where you will find mostly affordable, practical, and easy DIYs. Today, I have another collection of Dollar Tree DIY organizers that you can use in your home. So, let's get started! For the first DIY, I will be revamping one of my favorite organizers. And this is a caddy that I created about maybe a a year and a half ago this organizer is multi-purpose and i love it a lot so i will be linking in the description box below and also on the upper right hand corner an i card to the original video so this past summer we were able to use this in our backyard and because we are in a pandemic situation we weren't able to leave or go anywhere so what I've done here and I'm gonna be repeating it in this video is just a simple update and I just want to show you that the handle can be used as a holder for your paper towel so it was perfect for outdoor barbecuing as well as picnic so I'm just gonna show you here how I'm setting this up so I found these paper cups from Amazon so just to be color coordinated and then this one here is actually a magazine or a book holder it's also from Dollar Tree and it's in the same style as the containers that I use as shelves and it matches perfectly and I, that's where I place my paper plates to keep them corralled and then I'm gonna be placing the paper bowls in case people would want to eat some desserts or soups then I'm placing them at the bottom now I'm using these paper cups that I got at Dollar Tree in the wedding aisle and I like it because it again color coordinates with the gray and white theme here and it also is the perfect size to fit into the caddy you know the shower caddy that I placed on each side so that's where I'm placing the utensils so I have the spoons and the forks on the right side here and then on the left I will be using one cup for my straws and then the other cup for the knives and then I'm placing some of the napkins at the bottom as well I'm using two Dollar Tree skinny baskets where I'm putting also some sauces and condiments and some other seasonings there and I'm putting one on each side and they are just freebies these sauces coming from you know restaurants I don't want to waste them so I'm using them as well and I have this salt shaker here and I'm gonna put it on the left side because there's still enough space to hold it and I love that the paper towel holder is an added bonus here especially if there's spillages or if there's not enough paper napkins speaking of camping you can use this to also hold your soaps your toothbrushes your shampoos your lotions and the possibilities are endless really how you want to use this and I like that this is so versatile For the next DIY, I will be showing you how I organize the stackable bin organizers. To watch the full tutorial, I will be also linking it in the description box below as well as an iCard that I'm going to add on the upper right hand corner of this video. This is a requested one and I'm actually creating this for my nephews and nieces. But at the same time, there was one who requested, she's a teacher, and as well as a mother who is homeschooling her kids. Especially these days, almost every kid in the nation is being homeschooled. So I created this organization unit so that you can separate items here. It's also perfect as a home office or a craft room organizer. But for kids, for their items in homeschooling, or even for their toys, you can use this to probably organize small toys or parts of let's say a Lego toy and I don't have those items because I don't have small kids anymore so I'm just using my planners as well as my other crafting or journaling needs here just to give you a depiction but again please watch the full tutorial on how I inverted some of these containers to create this cube and I connected them using zip ties I love it. 
Now for the next DIY, I'm just showing you that, you know, like this box item here, I purchased this online and the minimum number of these frames that come in the single unit or box is 12. 12 pieces of this 4x6 frames. And you can have free drop shipping if you want to buy something in bulk like this if you're creating or recreating some of my projects. And that's free for you and just pick them up. And if you want to buy them, pay for some shipping and handling, then you can do that as well. So I have just removed the inserts on this one, including the glass. And I have replaced or put back the backing without the glass and you know that print that it came with because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be creating a jewelry organizer well it's an organizer for rings as well as earrings this frame is perfect because it is deep and I'm gonna be using my daughter's old foam rollers and they do sell also foam rollers at Dollar Tree so here I'm just marking each side to make sure that I cut the proper size of my foam rollers. And I'm just gonna be using my ruler here and I think this is close to three and a half. It's not quite three and a half, so don't take my word for it. Just use your ruler for a more accurate measurement. Then I'm marking on the foam roller where I'm going to be making the cut with exact measurement. But before I cut, there is a wire inside the foam roller to make it twist. So I cut the button on one end and on the opposite end, I pull it out like so. So I'm doing that on all foam rollers that I'm gonna be using. Here, I'm just cutting it with a box cutter and then I use the scissors in the end for each one. And I have four purple and four turquoise or teal because I want the kind of color combination to give it more depth and it'll be more fun rather than having just one color. So I'm applying hot glue each time before I attach the roller and take note I am not applying the hot glue to the foam but to the backing of the picture frame. This way I do not burn the foam because it might melt also because hot glue is hot and it could melt things and it's a cleaner application also and I could avoid burning myself as well as you could see here I waited too long so I needed to add more hot glue so I am just alternating the colors since the foam rollers from Dollar Tree may not be as smooth as this you may want to cover them with fabric so that they will look much prettier. Actually, you can use them as is, but since my daughter's old rollers that she is no longer using really look so smooth compared to the ones they sell at Dollar Tree, you may want to cover your Dollar Tree rollers with fabric. Remove any excess glue and start organizing the rings as well as earrings and if only they sell the big ones the big frames at Dollar Tree you could probably make one that would be big enough to hold also strands of necklaces I love how this turned out and you can fold the back and put it inside your drawer or maybe on top of your desk or vanity like so or use the back stand and keep it upright and that's how actually my daughter is using it currently here are some of her earrings so I'm placing them there too and you can create more than one and you can actually use this as a gift for someone who likes rings and earrings or jewelry in general I love it and I love the color it's really pretty now for the next DIY I will be using three 4x6 frames 
similar to the one I used earlier and I'm going to be creating another jewelry or vanity organizer where I can hold watches or it could be a catch-all for watches or your daily regular jewelry like bracelets and rings so you can keep this on your vanity or your bathroom counter so here I'm just gonna be loosening it up opening it this way because I am going to be using this Dollar Tree gift bag and I am just gonna cut it to size so that I can replace the image or the insert there I like this design because it is like a hologram or holographic design and it does look like diamond right or jewelry or gem so this will be perfect for a vanity organizer for a catch-all so this is a very simple DIY organizer and it's very inexpensive for a total of four dollars I mean it's really very inexpensive to make so after cutting those three inserts to size I am just placing it inside and then putting the glass as well as the backing with the stand intact and then placing them inside this picture frame like so now you could remove the backing or the stand I decided not to because it can be inserted and it'll hold it there so next time or in the future if I want to revamp this then I still have the stand but if you want to remove go for it now you can use fix all well actually it's super glue fix all or E6000 to put them together along with hot glue but for demonstration purposes I will be just using hot glue this time and I know from my previous DIY and I'm gonna be linking it in the upper right hand corner I was so repetitious just telling everybody repeatedly use also E6000 or any commercially made glue like super glue and another way to also reinforce you can use those craft sticks at the back to connect each end and apply more glue there at the back so if you want to make sure that it doesn't get dislodged or separated so especially if you are using this on top of your vanity in your bathroom and there's a lot of moisture there or maybe humidity or if you live in a high humid area you do need a glue that's stronger than hot glue now I'm just gonna go ahead and prop it up with some of my items that I could probably display on it so like this candle that I got also at Dollar Tree and here are a couple of watches just for demonstration purposes so I have these two watches here there's still a room for a third one here's a bangle or a bracelet you can put more if you want to you can also put rings here you know to temporarily corral or hold your rings and earrings especially after you left the house you know and you came back home and you just want to remove them before you take a shower or bath and I am also using this to display some of the perfumes and skincare toner I just want to just demonstrate here that it's not only for jewelry but also for perfumes that you can normally see probably on a vanity and then I'm just putting in some fake flowers from Dollar Tree these are the pink hydrangeas just to make it a little bit more feminine and romantic and again a very inexpensive DIY and it only cost me four dollars to make I really love the finish on this frame because I don't need to paint it and there's already a gilded edge with gold and since it's still fall I'm using this small ceramic pumpkins that I got at Target Dollar Spot a year ago 
and I'm just propping it up here just to make it a little bit glam as well for fall. So you can use that as well if you don't want to use it to corral your perfumes or your jewelry. So here it is again, a photo with just the perfumes this time. Now for the last DIY, I'm going to be using this square picture or art frame and then these two dry erase paddle board or dry erase board that they sell at the school supply section at Dollar Tree. I know some of you have mentioned in the comment section below on my previous DIY that you couldn't find those cutting boards that they sell at the kitchen aisle at Dollar Tree. So if you cannot find them, go to the school section and you can find this paddle board. They're not the exact size, you know, width and height, but you can definitely be creative with them as well. So I'm going to be using this 8 by 8 square wooden frame and I'm just snapping off this backing here that they use for hanging. And this is the right width that matches this dry erase paddle board. And what I'm going to do is create a carrier or an organizer for the vanity again or any nook in your home or even your table or your side table. So I'm just going to be painting the sides, the inner sides here using my Rust-Oleum chalk paint. Now this is not sponsored. I purchased this at Amazon and I can link it in the description box below in case you're interested. Now I'm going to be using also this jumbo craft sticks and I think they sell them also at Dollar Tree but I got mine at Amazon and I'll be linking them in the description box below again in case you're interested. I believe Walmart sells them as well. So this is just a small cut that I'm making. So because it is so thin, I am going to be just cutting one end. I'm not cutting both ends. So I'm just trimming it to size so that it'll fit inside the back of my frame. I'm just using a sharp pair of scissors here. And the first stick that I showed you, this one here, I just angled it i just cut an angle using the same scissors and to make sure that i also fit that one there on the top corner so that'll be my first stick and then the rest i am just going to be using them in full except for the last two the second from the last one i cut the angles as well but since there is a space there, a small space, I am cutting one piece to size in order for it to fit. I'm just using this box cutter and I am just scoring it lightly and then until I'm able to snap it like so. And then I'm going to be cutting or trimming each end with angles so that they will just fit in that corner. And you will see me here cutting it a couple more times in order for me to fit it snugly. Then once every stick fits, I am applying hot glue on each one and then adhering them to the inner part or the back part of the frame. Just using hot glue. Voila! Now I am going to be attaching my paddle board 
on each side. But before I do that, I just want to make sure that I measure my stick. I just got this dowel from, I believe, Walmart before. And if you want to use also the handle of a clean or unused toilet plunger, you can use that too. You probably need a saw to cut that. I'm just using my Dollar Tree handy dandy scissors. It's sharp enough and it can cut through this dowel here. You can buy dowels at Walmart as well as Michael's or Joann's. Any craft stores will carry the dowels. So I'm just trimming this. And then what I'm going to do before I connect or attach the puddle boards, I am just going to be puncturing holes on each of the handle of my puddle board. So I'm just marking where I am going to be puncturing the holes with a pencil. And I'm using the bottom or the tip of my dowel to use that as my measuring guide for the diameter of the hole. Now, this is gonna be a little bit tedious if you are not using the proper tool probably because this is a little thick. I underestimated it. I thought that I can just easily use this hole puncher. And unfortunately, it's too thick. It doesn't work. <laughs> As you can see here I'm just showing you the struggle so if you're thinking about using a hole puncher it's not gonna work now you can use a drill or a screwdriver a manual screwdriver or an electric drill you can use that but I know most of you don't have those so I'm just gonna show you a crude method of using the blunt end of your scissors would also work so here I'm also demonstrating that, okay, I'm gonna give it a try with a box cutter because it's sharp. So with enough patience, I'm sure I would have been able to do so, but I ended up going back to my blunt end of my scissors. So again, you can use whatever you have there. If you have a heat tool, you know, the cutting tools, I have one, but I know most of you don't have those tools so I'm just showing you you can use this Dollar Tree scissors actually this is so tough and I've used this to even cut those you know garden fences and even wires floral wires and look this did the job I was able to puncture the hole with a little bit of struggle of course elbow grease so you don't have to buy any expensive tools again if you have items in your house maybe even a knife would do or would work but as a crafter, I have a lot of scissors, so I just used one of them and it worked. So I made sure that I punctured the holes in the same position so that they will be aligned when I put the dowel. So here they are, and I'm now ready to assemble the pieces together. But first, I am just gonna be gluing. Again, you can use hot glue with E6000 and super glue or any industrial type glue not just hot glue because it's not gonna work it's gonna be detached but for demonstration purposes I'm just using it here so I didn't apply paint of course because with paint it weakens the glue so the bond will not be as strong so since it's going to be covered anyway with the paddle board, I didn't paint this side. And then what I'm going to do is just place the paddle board. And besides, the paddle board itself is slippery. So if that was painted, it's not going to work. So I'm just pressing this to make sure that it holds better. Ta-da! Now I'm going to be applying hot glue to the inner part of the circle or that hole that I created and to the ends of my dowel so that it will be secure. And then after I attach the handle, 
I am going to be pushing it a little bit to make sure that it goes all the way to the end without anything sticking out. That's why I measured it beforehand. And then I'm also doing it on the opposite end. And then also adding more glue to the opposite side of my handle with a hole. You know, that opposite hole there, like so. So that it'll be more secure. And then I'm gonna camouflage the holes, don't worry. Kind of like my previous caddy organizer, I placed something there and then later on I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna use to camouflage the holes. So this is gonna be different, a little different than the one I used before. So here it is. I'm just gonna let it dry. And then now I'm ready to paint. I'm not gonna paint the sticks that I placed on the back side of the frame which is now the top side because I want to make it look dual tone and I like the natural finish so I'm just gonna paint with my rust-oleum chopped linen white paint the outer part of my frame and also what I'm gonna do here is just let it dry for the first coat and then apply a second coat and then I am just going to be applying some more paint on the paddle board. As you can see, there is an unfinished side there. I was thinking maybe leaving it like that in brown, but I've decided to paint it also with the same linen paint to just make it a little bit more cohesive. I could have left it bare like that because it matches the color of the sticks anyway, but I figured uh, why not just paint it and I think I like it better painted so that it really I know makes it more worth it to look at the dowel handle and the sticks in their natural finish So I've noticed that there is a little bit of a buckle here, probably when one of the sticks just didn't align well. So I am just fixing that. And I am going to be camouflaging now the end and I'm using this die cut wooden chipboard sticker that I got at Dollar Tree also. You know how they sell those nice stickers that are kind of 3D? So I am just using identical butterfly stickers on each end and it looks so neutral. I love it. You know, I've decided not to use the rope anymore because I've used it before. So I just want to show you another option. You can also use flowers or petals here or ribbons, but I decided to use this wooden chipboard butterflies. Ta-da! Now, since I am not that satisfied, I'm still going to add a little bit more on it. But first, I'm just going to show you how I'm going to be decorating it for fall. Since it's still fall, I know everybody else is decorating for Christmas or winter season, but fall is my favorite season of all. So I'm just using some of my items here the flower arrangement there was a diy from three years ago for mother's day and then i am just going to be using this twine that i have left over from another project so you can use probably 12 inches or 14 inches long it depends on how long you want your ribbon or bow to be so i'm just gonna create a simple twine bow on each end just to give it a little bit more character now since I am entitling this an organizer you can still use this as an organizer probably on your kitchen countertop or your kitchen table you can put some sauces or condiments there probably place them in nice glass or bottles so that they will look really nice but right now i am just decorating it for fall those one dollar each ceramic pumpkins from target dollar spot and that candle there is from dollar tree and again the project the flower arrangement is what i made 
years ago and I love it. I unlike those cutting boards that I decorated with buffalo check design, I left it plain and since the color is similar to the chalk linen paint, I just took advantage of the color there. So you can decorate it with contact paper because it's slippery, better than painting. Now I'm just gonna show you another option for a handle because I mentioned about the handle of a plunger. Now they sell this at Dollar Tree, this rubber mallet. You can cut this to size. I think it's almost perfect for the width or length. You could probably cut a couple of inches to make it work. So I hope you enjoyed this video, everyone. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please share to anyone who may be interested in these types of projects. I do appreciate you all supporting my previous videos. I hope you support this again. Please reshare. Please leave me some comments down below. Let me know what you think and what is your favorite of all of the DIYs you've seen today. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And don't forget to click that notification bell icon so that you will not miss any of my new uploads. Have a great day everyone and I hope to talk to you again on my next video. Take care and God bless. Bye bye!